want to just read few words from the holy scriptures we will find it in this book of psalms chapter 49 verse 1 2 and 3 as some said here or wrote here hear this all ye people give ear all ye inhabitants of the world both low and high rich and poor together third verse the last one my mouth shall speak of wisdom and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding amen and amen we do hope of the same thing that lord may speak the understanding and wisdom for we people really we are the blessed people privileged people for this special evening as i said as god has provided this special opportunity to the worship of him why not we bow our heads in the begin we just prayer and we have come to the special service in the name of the lord jesus christ and to this uh, to do this uh, initial prayer i do request pastor rajesh viswas from west bengal purulia he will do this service for the glory of god let brother pastor viswas you just uh, commit this prayer initial prayer is called amen god bless you pastor rajesh viswas aapka mic ko theek kariye आपका म्यूट है म्यूट अनम्यूट कर दीजिए हाँ अभी हो गया आइए हम अपने सरों को झुकाए अब प्रार्थना के लिए हमारे स्वर्गीय पिता हम आपका धन्यवाद देते हैं कि पिता ये आपको अच्छा लगा कि ये शाम के घड़ी में प्रभु हमारे लिए आपने उत्तम से उत्तम व्यवस्था आपने किया है प्रभु हम इस चीज में अपने आप को बहुत ही सौभाग्यशाली समझ रहे हैं कि प्रभु आपने हमारे लिए जो व्यवस्था किया कि आज की इस शाम कि प्रभु इस शाम के इस मेला में इस मीटिंग में जितने सेवक गण हैं जो इसमें एकत्रित हुए हैं इस, इस सभा में प्रभु ज्वाइन किए हैं और हमारे लिए प्रभु आपने फिक्र करते हुए इन सारी व्यवस्था को आपने लिया कि आज के इस दिन में प्रभु हम आपके वचन से कुछ बातों को हम सीखे जाने और इसके लिए प्रभु आपने सारी व्यवस्था किया है हमारे परमेश्वर हम आपको धन्यवाद देते हैं पिता निवेदन करते हैं कि आज की इस सभा में आपकी बहुत बड़ी आशीष हो और प्रभु हम जितने प्रभु इसमें ज्वाइन है प्रभु आपकी सेवट गण है हमारे परमेश्वर हम विशेष निवेदन करते हैं प्रभु कि जो बातें आज के शाम आप अपने सेवक के द्वारा से जिन बातों को प्रभु हमारे बीच में बातें करेंगे प्रभु हम उस सारी बातों को हम समझ सके हमारी बुद्धि समझ नहीं है पिता हम निवेदन करते हैं प्रभु 
कि हमें वो बुद्धि और ज्ञान दे ताकि आपकी बातों को हम समझ सके क्योंकि ये हमारे लिए बहुत जरूरी है इस अंतिम समय के लिए इतना हम निवेदन करते हैं प्रभु आपकी अनुग्रह हमारी साथ हो और प्रभु एक एक वचन एक एक बातें एक एक संदेश जो भी हम सुनते हैं प्रभु उसको हम सही ढंग से अपने जीवन में ले सके और इससे हम आगे बढ़ सके प्रभु आप हमारी साथ और मदद कीजिए हमारे परमेश्वर जितने जन इसमें ज्वाइन किए हैं हर एक के नेटवर्क को प्रभु सही रखिए कंट्रोल में रखिए ताकि प्रभु हर एक के पास आवाज पहुंच सके और सभी अपने अपनी भाषा में अच्छी ढंग से समझ सके प्रभु आप अनुग्रह और दया कीजिए हमारे परमेश्वर आपकी बड़ी कृपा और अनुग्रह हो ये छोटी सी प्रार्थना तारन हार प्रभु यीशु मसीह के नाम से मांगते हैं ए मैन थैंक यू गॉड ब्लेस यू पास्टर विश्वास भाई इट इज नाउ टाइम टू एंटर इन टू द सर्विस मे बी हिंदी मीन इंटरप्रिटर इज म्यूटेड Yes, it's working. Yes. Fine. Are you fine in the interpreter? That's okay. That's okay. God bless you all. We are we are glad to have you all, especially the ordaining minister. invited minister brother chad and others brothers who are interpreting and helping him we are glad for you and is all the pastors and ministers who have come and attended here we can say god bless you all as you know it is a special ministers conference and we hope so that god will bless all the minister who had attended and listening now going forward to the worship before we going forward to the worship i commit this uh, platform to host pastor that is brother samuel bumpaka to introduce something and enter to introduce our speaker to introduce the other brothers and as well God bless you brother Samuel Bumpar Okay God bless you all God bless you all Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ And it's good to see you all again And uh Uh, you all know uh, that we are uh, uh, working on something to strengthen the bride all over the world amen you all know since uh, past 3 4 months we are dealing with the false doctrines
and also some issues related to the church, its order, and the fivefold ministry. And we have received the testimonies uh, that many of the brethren are being strengthened through these meetings. And we thank the Lord for this opportunity. To serve the Lord like this. There's a team behind it actually. And we appreciate you all for your praise. And we thought to have another meeting like this with the, with the issues related to the church order. <clears throat> and we contacted Brother Chad Lam, a precious brother from USA. Pastoring at uh, Believers Christian Fellowship. And he, he accepted our invitation. And we are glad that he's, he accepted our invitation and he's here with us now. And we thank the Lord for the speaker. And before I, I give the platform to the speaker, let us worship the Lord for a minute. Let us prepare, let us prepare something for the Lord so that he comes down here. Amen, amen. amen. Let us all close our eyes. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Let us all prepare our hearts. Yes. Let us all prepare a good ground so that the Lord will come down and sow his seed. Yes, Lord. Amen. We all know that there are many issues like this, coming up with the church. This time be one. I just want to rush on. This will be tiles. Many this of them, many of us going like out of the church order. Which is not at all good. It's not according to the word, not the message. And now, if we depend on a man, we will not get anything. So, let's invite our Lord Jesus Christ amongst us. Let's invite the Holy Spirit. So that he comes down powerfully and speak to us. Amen. Let's ask our Lord Jesus Christ to anoint his servant. with a great measure in this evening time to strengthen the church worldwide. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let us sing a chorus so that our Lord Jesus Christ comes down Amen. live amongst us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, Lord God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us all close our eyes. Let us all lift our hands unto the Lord. Let us sing this chorus. If you want to stand, you can stand on your feet. If you want to kneel down, you can kneel down. You, you can sing with us this song and invite our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing Teri Aradhana Karum. Teri Aradhana Karum. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. and everything.
to invite the speaker onto the dais. And it's the time, and I'm just handing over the impact to Brother Mishra. Amen. God bless you, brothers. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. God bless you all again. Now it is a special time to meet with the meet the Lord. Amen. And uh, as we know about the, our poster, the selecting the theme. Understanding the church order. We do pray for our speaker brother. Thank you. Let God anoint him with the speeches, with the full of wisdom and need of the hour. Before giving him this pulpit, I just recall one quotation from our prophet had said. In the message called the resurrection of Lazarus, prophet of God said, now is the day. You get ready now. You are probably living in one of the best days that you will ever see. Hmm. That's right. You must take heed today to the word of God. The Holy Spirit has been in the world for evangelism for 1900 years and better. This is the day of evangelism to move out and get the church in order. Right. And as Prophet had said, we have come to keep our church in order. That's right. So it is a lovable time for entering to the word, to the Holy of Holies. With respect to Brother Chad to speak for us. Our prayer is with you. Let God take care of you. Amen. Now it is your full pit. God bless you. God bless you, brothers. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, well, I want to say God bless you. It's good to be with you. And I appreciate this opportunity. And I pray that you're patient with me. This is my first time on Zoom. But uh, we thank God for this opportunity to share this time together. And so we're going to speak today and tomorrow on church order. And while we speak on this church order, I'm just going to share with you the things that I see. Because we can only preach what we see. 
And I feel like as brethren, if we share what we see, then we can gain from one another's perspective. And maybe it'll help us see more clearly. So uh, we'll just take a look, if we could, at uh, Revelation chapter 4. I'd like to begin in Revelation chapter 4. And I'm going to begin in verse 1. After this, I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show these things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. And verse four. And and round about the throne were four and twenty seats and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts, full of eyes before and behind. We'll skip to verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when the beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Now, when we start speaking about church order, we have to recognize that heaven has an order. So when John was caught up into heaven and saw the throne, there was an order to worship. There were different kinds of creatures and seven spirits and 24 elders. And they all had a certain position and they had something to do in the worship. 
and all the order and all of and all of the worship was focused upon one thing and it was focused upon the one who sat upon the throne so we know that the church order We need church order because heaven is in order. And we're supposed to be a reflection of heaven. And so all of the order was pointing to one. It was pointing to the one who sat on the throne. that he might have the focus. And he may be the main one. So if I could start this morning on church order, I wanna, uh, I wanna take a big picture of church order. So today, I want to look at it from a, uh, the big picture of church order. And tomorrow, we can get into more details. Because church order is not about rules. There's a purpose behind it all. And if we understand the purpose then we know why the church order is set the way it is. See, one thing we learn in the message of the hour is that God wants to be known. See, when God called Israel out of, e out of Egypt, He, he was calling them unto himself. And upon the mount, he wanted to reveal himself to his people. And he did not intend to give them the law. He was only going to give them the Ten Commandments. And that would have been their order. But when they refused to go up unto him, they wanted Moses to go for them. And that's when God gave them the ordinances and the law. Then Moses came down with a book of ordinances. But that wasn't God's original desire. His original desire was to be known of his people. And he gave them a simple order in the Ten Commandments. But they wanted more. The prophet of God said they, they desired a law. So they received the book of ordinances. But the New Testament tells us that the book of ordinance that was risen, written against us was nailed to the tree at Calvary. Because the Jews received an ordinance and a law And they begin to focus on the ordinance and they lost track of the one who gave them the ordinance. So they began to worship the law 
and forgot to worship the lawgiver. And, and so they lost the understanding of God. And they focused on the law of God. And because they lost focus, when, when Jesus Christ came as the fulfillment of the law, they didn't recognize him nor did they want him. They wanted to keep their law. So when we talk about church order, it's not so that we can have a law. It's so that we can have an order. And in that church order, it puts our focus back on the one who sits on the throne. So this is the day of the manifestation of the full word of God. But it, will, it won't be accomplished by legalism. The full manifestation of the full life of Christ cannot be ordered by a law. But it comes by revelation. So the word has been restored in this day. And when God gives the bride revelation on the word, It gives, it gives her understanding of God. It is the mind of Christ coming to the bride. And that revelation brings a manifestation. And that manifestation can never be produced by a law. It can only be produced by relationship. So church order must fit this picture. So church order must help us in the relationship. It must give us an order to worship that keeps us focused on the one on the throne. And so that's the purpose of our church order. And if we don't understand this, the little details become something that we begin to trip over. But that's not the purpose. It is not to divide us. It's to give us focus back to the one sitting on the throne. So in church order, everything points back to the one on the throne. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. We know that God, all things were created by the word of God.
Because Hebrews tells us that the creation was formed by the word of God. And Brother Branham explains to us creation. And he said, you had a big ball of light, the sun. And he saw a little piece break off and float away. And it went, and it went so far and he said, stop. And it stopped and it stayed there. And another piece broke off and moved until he said, stop. And it kept coming like that as God was creating the universe. And Brother Ben said, what is he doing? He's writing his first Bible. And so when he's writing his first Bible, he's putting everything in position. Everything has a place. And it all has a purpose. And the heavens are ordered of the Lord. Brother Benham said in the paradox, how that everything in heaven in that constellation if one of those stars would move he says a star doesn't move if that star would move we would we would move it I'm sorry, he said, if that star would move, we would move with it. Everything in heaven is so much in harmony, it holds one another together. He also says in the message, marriage and divorce. says, we find out that everything in the beginning was running in perfect order and harmony with God. Nothing was out of cater. Everything in heaven is still in order. All the stars, the galaxies, the solar system. If one of them move, it would interrupt the whole program. So, in the order in heaven, God has the heavenlies in order. And if one of those heavenly beings would move out of order, It would affect it would affect everything else. This is showing us church order. Let's go to Genesis one. Read verse one again. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. So we know that God continues to recreate the earth with the spoken word. Something happened to the earth. 
something got out of order. And we find the earth was in chaos. Brother Benham said it was under judgment. And the waters covered the face of the deep. But then he began to speak. And the word of God began to bring it into a, an order again. So here we learn a principle about the word of God. The word of God brings order. The spoken word of God brings order. Now, let's go to chapter 2, verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Let's go to verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Brother Benham says in God's power to transform. He says, now the headquarters with his son and his son's bride over all. It looked so perfect. There was a man, the head of it all. His own son and his bride. And every seed was perfect. And the palms and the oaks and the grass and the birds and the animals. And everything was in perfect order with the commandment of God. So everything was ordered by God's word. He said, let every seed bring forth after its kind. It was in order. Everything was operating the way God had spoke it. And commanded it to. And it was perfect. And Adam was placed as the pastor over it all. And this was his church. And everything was in order. Let's read chapter 2, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. See, God was keeping it in order by his word. So this commandment was part of his church order.
And as long as they kept the order, everything remained in perfection. But when they broke the commandment of God, the first thing that was broken, or the main thing that was broken, was their fellowship with God. Because it was really all about God fellowshipping with His Son. For God to fellowship with His children. And God had set it in order. And when they kept the order, He kept coming down to commune with them. But when they broke God's order, it broke the fellowship. God had given it to Adam to dress it and to keep it. So he was there to work in the garden and to keep it or to guard it, to protect it. So how could Adam protect the garden? Because that is what this word keep means. It means to guard. So as long as Adam was keeping the order, or or keeping the word, everything stayed perfect. But when he failed to keep the commandment, Then the order collapsed. And fellowship was not the only thing that was broken. Because now nature was broken. Now all of creation is in a fallen condition. See, when they failed to keep the order by failing to keep the word in preeminence. We're going to find as we go through this study that the focus of church order, the way the prophet, the way the prophet spoke about it, was to keep the word in preeminence. It was all about focusing on the one sitting upon the throne. So that's why church order is important. It keeps the word in preeminence. Let's turn to 1 Kings chapter 10. If you'll be patient with me, I want to paint a big picture throughout the scriptures. Because the message opened the whole Bible. And anything we want to understand We understand it in the context of the entire word. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 4. It 
And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, it was a true report that I heard in my own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Howbeit I believed not the words until I came and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I had heard. Happy are thy men, happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. So, Brother Benham tells us that Solomon in this kingdom is a type of Christ in the millennium. And Solomon had put all Israel in order. His servants were in order. The Levites were in order. Everything was in order. And so this is a typing the ministry of Christ. And he puts everything in order. And when the queen of Sheba saw it, she had no more spirit in her. It, it, it uh, took her breath away. It was even greater than what she expected. It was more than what she had heard. And it wasn't when she looked at Solomon that her spirit was no more. It's when she looked at the order all around him. And the, the way his servant served. And the way he went up into worship. And under Solomon's ministry, every gift had found its place. Solomon had the church in order. The one serving at the table They were the ones most suited to serve at the table. His cupbearer was the best cupbearer. Solomon didn't have a cupbearer that was waiting on tables. But under Solomon's ministry, under his wisdom, he put all the gifts in their place. And, and when the queen of Sheba saw that, she had no more spirit within her. Then she knew his wisdom surpassed everyone's wisdom. 
And Brother Branham, Brother Branham told us that a greater than Solomon is here now. So the last time he preached a greater than Solomon, because he used that title many times, but the last time he preached it, He said, a greater than Solomon is here now. So if a greater than Solomon is here now, which we know is the fullness of Christ, which is the full measure of the Holy Ghost, that has been loosed at the end time message, to come back in the church again, then that Holy Ghost can order the church. Till every gift finds its place. When, so when you see a true deacon being a true deacon and a support minister as a support minister, and a pastor as a pastor, and a trustee as a trustee, and a song leader as a song leader, when the Holy Ghost puts it in order, it'll take the spirit right out of somebody. They'll recognize the wisdom of God. Because it's a greater wisdom than the wisdom of man. It can't be the wisdom of a pastor. It has to be more than the pastor. It has to be a greater than Solomon is here now. That's why he has to be the one who orders church order. Just like he ordered the heavenlies. And he ordered the garden. He has to order our churches. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 7. Verse 48. And Solomon made all the vessels that pertained unto the house of the Lord, the altar of gold and the table of gold, whereupon the showbread was. And the candlesticks of pure gold, five on the right side and five on the left, before the oracle with the flowers and the lamps and the tongs of gold. And the bowls and the snuffers and the basins and the spoons and the censers of pure gold and the hinges of gold, both for the doors of the inner house, the most holy place, and for the doors of the house, to wit of the temple. So was ended all the work that King Solomon made for the house of the Lord. And Solomon brought in the things which David his father had dedicated, even the silver and the gold and the vessels that he put among the treasures of the house of the Lord. Chapter 8. 
chapter 8, verse 1. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto King Solomon in Jerusalem. And they might bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves to King Solomon at the feast in the month of Ethnim, which is the seventh month. So we see that they're bringing forth the word in the seventh month. which types the seventh church age. So he's bringing everything together to build the house of the Lord. And the last thing he's going to set in place is the ark, which is the word. The, the ark, which contains the word. And, and this is happening in the seventh month or the seventh age. So they go in and they place everything in the Holy of Holies. Everything else was finished. But the last thing they were bringing in and setting in place was the ark. So they were bringing the word into its position. And when they got the word into its position, it says in verse 10, and it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord. So that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. So under Solomon's ministry, when he got everyone in position... And everything in the church was in position. And the seventh month, they bring the word. And they get the word in position. And when they get the word in position, the presence of God comes down and fills the temple. which is a type of the church of God. Solomon's temple was not a tent. That was the tabernacle in the wilderness. It was under a tent. But Solomon's temple was made of stones of all sizes and all shapes. Because this is typing the church that are living stones assembled together as a habitation for God. So Solomon gets everything in order And then in the seventh month, he brings the word and gets the word in order.
And then the presence of God fills the temple. Which is the message of the hour. The Holy Ghost back in the church again. So the prophet of God had to put the church back in order again. Because Christ wanted to pour himself into the church. And to fill the temple. Amen. Let's look at 1 Kings 18. First Kings 18 and verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice on the wood. And he said, to, he said, do it a second time, and they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time, and they did it the third time. And the water ran about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Then all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. So here comes Elijah. And don't miss that we had an Elijah in our day. And first, he rebuilds the altar of the Lord. So the altar of the Lord had been broken down. 
So first he brings back the altar. And he brings back the 12 stones, which speaks of the faith of their fathers. So, so our Elijah had to rebuild the altar. And he brought back the truth of the seven ages. Or seven stones. Seven revelations. Because a stone in the Bible is a revelation. Which speaks of the fathers. And when he rebuilds the altar, he sets everything in order. And when he gets everything in order, He says, I've done all this at thy word. So the word of God had ordered everything. And when Elijah had fulfilled all that God had commanded, the presence of God came down. The fire of God came down. And here's what he says. At the bottom of verse 36, he says, I I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. So the ministry of Elijah turned their hearts back again. And this ministry of Elijah has turned our hearts back again. Back to the faith of the fathers. The prophet of God has rebuilt the altar. He's put everything back according to the word of God. so that everyone would know that God has turned their hearts back. And then the presence of God comes down. And then the whole Bible speaks of the message. And we can find church order through the whole Bible. Because before the presence of God comes, Everything has to be in order. And when everything is in order according to the word, he comes. That's why Brother Brenham said the Holy Ghost has been bound by these denominational rivers for nearly 2,000 years. but has been loosed in the evening time by the evening time message. The Holy Ghost back in the church again. Amen. So now we see the importance of church order. Let's look at Luke chapter nine. We'll begin by reading verse 12. And when the day began to wear away, then came the twelve and said unto him, Send the multitude away, that they may go into the towns and country round about and lodge and get victuals, for we are here in a desert place.
But he said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they said, We have no more but five loaves and two fishes, except we should go and buy meat for all this people. And there were about 5,000 men, and he said to his disciples, Make them sit down by fifties in a company. So there's a need, and Christ is about to perform a miracle. But first, he puts the church in order. And he tells the disciples, make them sit in fifties. So Jesus didn't make them sit in groups of 50. He told the disciple to make them sit in groups of 50. So it was the disciples' job to get the congregation in order. There was 5,000 men. And we know it's 5,000 men besides women and children. How long would it take to get them to sit in groups of 50? It couldn't be 48. You can't have 48 people in this group and 52 people in this group. So the disciples had to go through and they would have to move two from this group over to this group. Can you imagine how difficult this was? But Christ was not going to do anything until they were in groups of 50. And it was the job of the ministers to get them in order. And verse 15 says, and they did so and made them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves and the two fishes and looked up to heaven. He blessed them and break and gave to the disciples to set before the multitude. And they did eat and were all filled, and they were were taken up of the fragments that remained to them, twelve baskets. So when the disciples obeyed Christ and made the people sit in groups of 50, the disciples had a difficult job. And if the people wanted to eat, they had to submit to the disciples. Because until the disciples did what they were told, and the people submitted to the disciples, no one was going to eat. But when everything was in order, Jesus broke the bread. And when he broke the bread, he gave the bread to the disciples. And he gave the bread to the disciples. And the disciples distributed the bread to the people.
So now Jesus is not directly commanding the people to sit in groups of 50. Neither is he the one giving them the bread. Jesus is giving the order. And now there has to be a cooperation between the, the ministry, the disciples, and the congregation. So the, the, the disciples had to shepherd the people. They had to shepherd them into this church order. Now, you can imagine they can't use force. Because they can't have a rebellion of 5,000 people. They have to shepherd them or guide them. Can you imagine trying to keep this in order? <laughs> but when they worked together and got it in order, now the bread was going to come from Christ through the disciples to the congregation. And when everything was done correctly, everybody ate all that they could eat. And there was a great abundance left over. So all the people that were hungry and were worried about getting food. They couldn't be striving. They couldn't be pushing. They couldn't be demanding. But they had to be in submission to the disciples who were in submission to Christ. See, the disciples couldn't bring their own idea of order. The disciples had to submit to Christ, to his order. So it wasn't their mind. It was the mind of Christ coming through the disciples to the people. And when everything was in place and in harmony, everybody ate all that they could hold. And there was surplus. I believe we can have the same thing in our churches. Every service. If we could come the way that God tells us to come. If the ministry will catch the mind of Christ. And not take their own mind. but begin to shepherd the people according to the mind of Christ. And if the people will trust the ministers and everybody works together, then Christ will break the bread and we will all eat as much as we can hold. 
and there'll still be word left over. There'll be a surplus. Because church order always puts the word in preeminence. See, and Moses was commanded to order the church in the wilderness. He was told to place the tribes in order. And he put the tabernacle in order. And he put the ministers in order. Then he put the tribes in order all around them. And everything was in order. And when they've got everything in order, the presence of God would come into the tabernacle. So Moses was told to put everything in order. But the very center of the entire order was the one who sat on the throne. Because the the mercy seat in the Holy of Holies was the throne of God on earth. So Israel was gathered around the mercy seat. But they couldn't gather any way they chose to. They had to come according to the word of the Lord. And that word came through Moses. So they had to trust Moses. And Moses would order Israel. Everybody camped in a certain place. And they marched in a certain order. And they couldn't change it. They had to submit to it. And when they submitted to the order, the presence of God would remain in their camp. They would see the pillar of fire and the cloud. So everything was centered around the presence of God. So everything was focused on the one sitting upon the throne. This was the purpose of their church order. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians 14 and verse 26. Now verse 26. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But 
But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For you may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under, be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. I want to skip to verse 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. So Moses ordered the church in the wilderness. And the apostle Paul ordered the New Testament church. And Paul was giving an order to the church so that they would focus on the word. And he wanted everything done decently and in order. Because when there's chaos and disorder, it's evidence that the serpent has been working. Because the word of God brings everything in order. And when the devil perverts the word, it brings everything out of order. So when we have churches that are out of order, then the serpent is working somewhere. The devil is bringing something to cause a disorder because, because the presence of God does not come down till everything's in order. That's why in the first church age, the devil went to break the word. He went to break the church order. He broke the role of a local pastor. They started with bishops and overseers. And they began Nicolaitanism. And all of it was breaking God's order. And when he broke God's order, he caused chaos in the churches. So it would take a prophet at the end time to, to show us what failed. 
and bring the church back into order. So that the fullness could come back. Amen. Brother Branham says in the message church order. From 1963. He said, well, brethren, I've appreciated being here with you tonight and brother Neville. And to the deacons and trustees and Sunday school superintendent, all of you. We trust that the Lord will help you now to carry out these orders for the kingdom of God. The reason I have said this is because that I think you have grown from children to adults. When you was a child, you talked like a child and you understood as a child. But now you're a man, so let's act as adults in the house of God. Behaving ourselves and honoring our offices and honoring every office. Every, every gift that the Lord has given us, let's put it in order. And honor God with our gifts and our offices. So God used the prophet of God to put the church back in order. Because the church is moving from childhood to adulthood. So he was expecting the church to act like adults. And to honor God with our offices and with our gifts. Because it all goes back to the one sitting on the throne. Church order will put the word in preeminence. In the rapture message, Brother Benham's going to talk about a vision he had had. Said, then I heard something like onward Christian soldiers. I looked and I, I, and here come that sainted bunch of little girls just exactly the way they was. All correctly dressed and their hair hanging way down on their back. Smooth, clean, marching like this to the step of the gospel. She was the word. They looked like one out of every nation. I was looking at it as they passed by and seen them pass by. Instead of going down, they started going up. I noticed one of them trying, two or three of them trying, getting out of line. I screamed, stay in line, and the vision left me. And I was standing in the room screaming, stay in line. The prophet of God was crying, stay in line. He was looking at the restored church. 
the one that had come back that was just exactly like the first one. And that's this end time bride. And he was watching her walk. And right in the back of the line, there was a couple that started getting out of step. And he's crying, get back in line. Get back in order. Come back in position. So I believe that's a commandment for us, brothers. That we have to stay in line. That the prophet was crying. Stay in line. Because in the end time, even though this was a restored bride, she was distracted by the worldly church. And when she was watching the worldly church, she took her eyes off the prophet and she started getting out of step. And he screamed, get back in step. Their attention had to come back on him. They had to get back in order. That's why I believe that it's important that we stay in order. The prophet brought the church back in order. because it's important to be in order. It's been important all through the Bible. And, and it's still important today. Brother Benham says something in the seventh seal. So now notice in Revelation 7, we read this. Twelve thousand of each tribe of the elected out of all of it, there's twelve thousand out of each tribe that's elected and are set right here in order. What are they? They're in tribal order. Yet they are not now, but they will be. They're in tribal order. What will be in tribal order? Not the regular Jew. No, but the one that's elected. the 144,000 will be set in tribal order. It says, oh my, how I'd like to show you. We won't go into it, but that's exactly what the church has to be. Right in order. Brother Branham is typing the ordering of the 144,000. They're ordered under the ministry of the two prophets. So the prophetic ministry to the 144,000 puts them in tribal order. And Brother Branham said that's exactly what the church has to be. Under the prophetic ministry to her, she has to be set in order. And God sent us a prophet to set the church in order. So 
so his presence could remain among us. When Brother Benham goes to preach the seals, he starts by preaching God hiding himself in simplicity, then revealing himself in the same. And the first thing he does is rededicate the temple. And when he rededicates the temple, or the church, the local church, he starts preaching church order. What's he doing? He's coming to the seals, to the opening of the seals. But in God hiding himself in simplicity, the first thing he does is rededicate the church. He said the church was dedicated a long time ago. But this is a re. This is a rededication. He said, and let us dedicate our lives as we dedicate this building. Showing that the church was dedicated a long time ago. But we're coming to a rededication. And when he comes to the rededication, he starts speaking of church order. He starts telling them, don't be talking in the, in the auditorium. Don't let your children run through the sanctuary. Come in orderly. If you want to, go to the altar and pray. Then go back to your seat. He starts reminding them how the music will play before service. Praise God, he, he's preaching church order. Because it's the pattern of the Bible. Because he's going to be preaching the seals. And the opening of the seventh seal is the coming of the Lord. But he's got to get everything in order first. So he starts preaching church dedication or rededication and church order. And then he goes into the seals. Praise be to God. He says in God hiding himself in simplicity. He said, now in the old tabernacle, there might, there might not be one person present this morning that was there the day of the dedication. When Major Ulrich played the music and I stood behind three crosses here to dedicate the place. The usher stood at the door to see that nobody talked. When you're done, you're talking outside, then you come in. If you desired to silently, you come to the altar and prayed silently. You walked back to your seat, opened up the Bible. What your neighbor done, that was up to him. You had nothing to say. 
If you want to talk to him, say, I'll see him outside. I'm here to worship the Lord. You read his word or sit quietly. And when the music played, the old piano, she would play softly down at the cross where my Savior died. Some real sweet, soft music. And then until it come time for the service. And the song leader got up and led a couple of congregational songs. And then if they had some outstanding solo, they sang it. But never just a bunch of carrying on. And then the music continually played. And then when I heard that, I knew it was time to come out. When a minister walks into a congregation of people praying in the anointing of the Spirit, you're bound to hear from heaven. That's just all. There's no way to keep from it. But if you walk into confusion, then you're so confused, the spirit's grieved. Praise God. Brother Brandon was speaking of church order. But all that he was pointing to was bringing to the preaching of the word. So that the word would have preeminence. So that when everything was in order and everything was done correctly, and the minister walked to the pulpit. And the church was ready, sitting under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the preacher comes out anointed with the Holy Spirit. Everything's in order. He said, you're bound to hear from heaven then. There's no way to keep from it. Amen. Christ will break the bread. <laughs> Amen. And there'll be an abundance to eat. Amen. I'm going to stop there for today because I wanted to look at the big picture of church order. Because when we look at church order through the Bible, and what Brother Brenham was pointing us to, then when we come down to the small details of church order, it's this understanding that makes the little things make sense. But if we're like the Jews and we're focused on the law, we can't even see what it's pointing to. But the, the law was pointing to Christ. The law was supposed to move them to Christ. but they refused him to keep the rules. 
And if we take church order in a legalistic way, we can make sure nobody's talking. And we can make sure the children aren't running through the sanctuary. But if we're not giving the word preeminence, we've missed the whole point. If it's not about the one who's sitting upon the throne, then we've missed the point of church order. We can have a deacon at every door. But if Christ is not given preeminence, is this living word for this generation is not the one on the throne. Then we've returned to Judaism. We get the rules, but we missed what they're pointing to. Church order is to point us to Christ. Our church order is to give the word preeminence. And I'll finish with this thought. As Brother Benham told us that the Holy Ghost is timid like a dove. And if we start breaking the church order, he'll fly away. Because when the dove came, it can only rest its feet upon something that has the same nature. So the nature of the lamb and the nature of the dove are the same. So when the dove comes down, it cannot rest his feet anywhere. It can only rest its feet upon the lamb. And the lamb is a sacrificial animal. The lamb has no will of his own. The lamb is surrendering his will to his master. Wherever his master leads, the lamb follows. When the master wants his wool, he gives it willingly. So the nature of the lamb is meek and submissive. And the nature of the dove is gentle. That's why when the dove descended at Jordan, it could rest its feet upon the lamb. And if we want to invite the Holy Ghost into our church services, we have to be in the nature of the Lamb. And it's the nature of submission to the Word of God. Sur surrendering our will. Giving our life and coming subject to the shepherd until it's all about the one sitting on the throne. And then the dove can come and rest his feet in our services. Amen. Is that not what we want, brothers? Isn't that our desire? That 
He'll find a place to rest in his church. When all the rules become rules, and it becomes legalism, and we fight and argue about the rules, the dove is not resting there. But when we come in submission to what the prophet of the age brought us, and we surrender to the word, we're showing we have the nature of the lamb. And when everything is in order, the presence of God can come down. God bless you, brothers. We love you and thank God for you. And I'd like to turn the service back to Brother Samuel now. God bless you, Brother Samuel. God bless you, Brother Chad. God bless you, Brother Chad. It is a wonderful message that we have heard. Everything is in order. And after having the order is finished, God descended upon the land. And God designed us to be a lamb. He likened us to a lamb. We are blessed people to hear all these ordering order. It is from the beginning of the creation up to the last of the book of Revelation we have heard. May God take care for the tomorrow, the last service as well. And uh, before going to the end, I want to pass this service to finalize by host pastor, Brother Samuel Bumpata. There are so many wonderful ministers, pastors from the land and the out of the land. And uh, we desire them tomorrow as well to cooperate us and uh, take us the bread as it will be fed. Brother Samuel Bimpaka, there is just some announcement. Let him do that. And make it end. God bless you, brother. Again, I say, brother Chad, God bless you. Amen. Thank you, brother. God bless you too. Uh, that was a wonderful time. And yes, we have learned many things about the church order. And as Brother Chad said, tomorrow he's going to elaborate more. They're hoping to go to the deepest places of understanding. Yeah. Let us try to understand the church order then. Everything must be in order. We request you all to pray for tomorrow's meeting. 
And uh, before we close the meeting, please note that uh, tomorrow's meeting will start at 5.30 p.m. Indian time. We have some unexpected reasons. So we are sorry for the inconvenience caused. And love to see you all tomorrow evening at 5.30 p.m. God bless you all. Let's all close our eyes so that we close the meeting with a prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord God, once again we thank you. Yes, Lord, that was a wonderful message from heavenly places. That Lord, you are explaining everything. It was a message like you were talking to your son Adam in the Garden of Eden. Yes, Lord. It was very smooth. And taking us throughout the scriptures. Helping us to understand the church order. We thank you, Lord, for using your servant mightily. And Lord, we thank you for this evening meeting. Lord, bless your servant, Brother Chad Lamb. And Lord, also bless each and every minister who is here. here. And Lord, bless each and every church. Let every church go under the perfect order. And Lord, we trust that tomorrow you're going to come into the scene again powerfully. I want your servant again, Lord. Let all the misunderstandings in church order be cleared, Lord. So that we all be ready for the rapture. And Lord, thank you for your wonderful word. Thank you for answering our prayer, Lord. And Lord, bless our tomorrow meeting. And Lord, when everybody comes to the meeting, Lord, it is not only we, Lord. You must be here, my Lord. Without you, our meeting will not be successful. Without you, we cannot understand anything. And that is the order, Lord, that you have to be here and we have to hear from you. And Lord, thank you for all these facilities. Thank you for answering our prayers, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you and God bless you all. God bless you, Brother Chad. Thank you. And also God bless you, Brother Franco. God bless you. Thank We'd love to see you again tomorrow evening. Amen. We'll do that. Yeah, God bless you all the ministers who is on this platform. And see you all tomorrow. Shalom. The meeting is closed. And you can leave now. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you too.
God bless you, Brother Frank. God.